Uh, my name is Andrew Godfrey. Uh, I work for the design transformation team at Envision. Um, I'm practice lead, uh, which uh, helps the design teams of our customers really understand where they can improve and help them do that. My name is Rebecca Grinley, and I'm a customer success manager at Envision. So I work with Fortune 100 size companies to help them scale their design practices. I think um, looking back at my experience and my uh, journey through design as a design professional, you often think about the thing that you're designing and how good that looks and how good it feels. Uh, so you concentrate on the hard skills quite a lot. Um, but actually, as I've gotten older and I've worked through my career, I've realized the soft skills um, are probably more valuable um, because you, because design is scaling, you're getting a seat at the table. And so designers are now becoming leaders, uh, kind of visioning what the business can be. Um, so you do need to work on kind of what that soft skill set looks like that you need in the, in the environment in which you work in. So when I work with designers, um, I often see um, the same kind of behaviour or the same challenge um, crop up and that is how they work across uh, disciplines and across teams and silos. Um, I think design uh, has never been more invested in and so the scale of design now is growing uh, yearly. And so these teams are kind of finding new ways to scale their practice. Well, as Andrew said, there are actually a lot of common problems among design or among leaders in general, the problems that they're trying to solve and that they're looking to see how they can use design to do it. So, so a lot of our work is trying to help connect those dots. And so for my part, it's a lot of discovery and understanding how the teams are working today when I'll pull in somebody like Andrew to come in and really work on some of the details with his expertise. So um, it does kind of range. You know, it, the success for different design teams can vary. It really does, just depending on the, prior, on the priorities and where they are at, in the design maturity scale. So for some, they're just looking for some simple fixes of how can they work better on their design team. Some are looking to understand how can they scale some of their practices and build up some organizational changes and some infrastructure into those changes and maybe think about design systems. So it really does depend on where the, the companies are at and there's a wide range that, that we focus on just depending on that. The reason I joined Envision was because it was founded by a designer. It was kind of very meta. Uh, so it was a designer building design software for designers. Um, and I really respected the fact that they, um, uh, we now, uh, put a lot of effort on the community and actually building out the community of design. I think design's matured a lot over the last year, uh, few years. Um, and it's really good to see a company kind of understand what the challenges are so then we, when we talk to designers we can emphasize with them and understand their needs a little bit better. Uh, so this report, the New Design Frontier report, um, it's really to say well we understand the challenges that you face um, and we've tried to give you some kind of idea of how other teams are doing it so then you can learn from them and making everything a little bit more transparent for each other. So it's a really interesting story actually. Our CEO was originally a designer. Um, he designed Envision basically out of need. Um, so he really is compelled with the struggles of designers to really be able to tell their story and show the value that they do provide. So that's always been baked into our culture of how can we really make our customers heroes and elevate design, help to elevate design within organizations. So we definitely use the Design Frontier Report with customers because ultimately we see a lot of similarities in their challenges and it feels like people are still trying to figure it out. Like what is gonna work for their business because each business really is unique. So even though we can kind of benchmark some of these things, how can we kind of relate this to their business? So it gives them kind of a starting point to evaluate you know, what might be missing and where they could be improving. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I think Rebecca uh, said it well. I think um, going back to my answer before where it's essentially giving people a benchmark to know where they are so you can actually start where the improvements are so you're not leading yourself through the dark a little bit um, but it, it, it is trying to make design a little bit more inclusive because the big I think the biggest surprise for me is how simple um, some of the, the top companies were performing why that was uh, simply because they worked as a connect a connector to the rest of the business so the design team yes concentrated on 
creating screen designs and service design, but they were also concentrating on making sure that people like finance or HR or uh, their leadership and business sponsorship came into the conversation regularly and often in the design practice. So they actually re reduced overhead, they um, operationalized design, they democratized it a little bit. Um, so this is, I think, uh, what the report is trying to kind of communicate to those uh, businesses that we work with um, and the habits of those level five teams. I see the future of design is a really exciting time, right? Because we have so many new things that are popping up all the time. The design systems are very popular right now and that's coming up. So how is that going to be used and how are tools going to be innovated upon, I think is a really interesting topic, but also how are people working together? So making design the heart of the organization, I think is, a, is another piece of how we're going to see things change. Yeah, I think the, to that point, the future of design is kind of being future friendly in, in respect, not future proof, where businesses before have been future proof, right? They've tried to predict the future and things have failed or disruption has happened. Um, but I think for, for me personally, I've, and, and I think the community as well, that um, it's becoming a lot more inclusive design and I'd like to see that become the future of design where um, yes, diversity in the team and the leadership, but also the fact that we're bringing in people that um, we're making design accessible for them and that we aren't the gatekeepers to the answer, but we're going to help them do it for themselves. I think that's a, a really powerful uh, moment in design as a profession, uh, which, yeah, it's really great to be involved in. Well done.